All right, so we're here in the shop, and we done goofed. We broke off a bolt here in the exhaust manifold. These two bolts are what mount the muffler on, and are supposed to bolt to the skirt of the muffler. Now, unfortunately, we screwed up, we broke one off, so what we're gonna have to do is get that out of there. And we went down to the store, we picked up a new 7 16 quarter tap. Go ahead and get that out of the box jack. And what we're going to do is run through, get this drilled out and fixed and ready to go. Okay, good. Got your safety glasses on. So take the manifold and put it on the drill press table. What does the manifold do again? It uh, flows the intake and exhaust gases to and from the engine. So you're going to want to flip that around the other way. What we'll probably do, Jack, is let's loosen the table and let's rotate the table sideways so that you can get the manifold on the table. Is that about right? Because we're not going to drill all the way through. And then what you need to do, hold on, with the table at that angle, go ahead and lift the table up to about here. Okay? Oh, too far. Too far. Jack, stop pulling up on it like that. Yeah, right about there. Uh, right about there is probably. That's probably about right. There we go. Okay. So now it's rested nice and solid. Wait. Get the drill bit started in the hole and run it down, okay? Is that the center punch mark? <laughs> Looks like it was. We'll go ahead and put that down in there. Now, when you're drilling, what you're going to find is that eventually, don't tilt it, go straight down. What you're going to find is you're going to feel the drill bit punch through. That's when you've drilled through the bolt. Hold it out here, it's easier to control from out here. Yeah, just like that. That gives you plenty of torque on holding the manifold and it's not gonna go anywhere. Keep going, it's gonna take quite a while to drill through that. Pick up. Lift up. Let's take a look down in there real quick. Yeah, I would say keep going. Remember, hold it out here. There you go. That's it. Yeah, pull up now. Turn off the drill press. Okay, now the tap says that we should use a U size drill bit for a pilot hole. So, what we're going to do is find a U drill. Well, we don't have one there, so we're going to go two sizes smaller and we're going to use a. I guess three sizes smaller, we're gonna use an R drill. Okay, let's change the drill bit. I wanna go a little bit smaller because we're not drilling in a new hole, we're drilling in an old hole and we might not be perfectly centered with our drill bit. Pick. <clears throat> okay, change the drill bit over.
Hey dad, you Make know what the, Hey dad, you know where this is, was made? Uh, should be made in China. I got that as a Christmas present when I was eight years old. Eight? Mm -hmm. John, tighten it up. Your dad trusted you with machinery when you were eight? Yeah, I wasn't allowed to use it unless he was right there watching me. Oh. There you go. Okay, so go ahead and turn it on and drill down through there. Yep, hold it out far, far away. The further out you hold it, the better. Don't worry about that, keep going. All the way until you punch through, just like the last one. There you go. Okay, turn it off. All right, and come around to the vise. Let's take a look. That's pretty far off center. We might have taken out some of the threads with that, but that's okay. We'll see what we can do here. So I'm going to try and get it started for you, and then you can tap it out. So hold the camera, see what we're doing. We're going to put some tap magic on there. That's lubricant, basically, is what it is. And it's a good lubricant for tapping. I have a couple of other ones, but you can see what you're doing with this one. The other one I have is a foamy style. So that's working pretty well. I can feel it taking out the threads. Let's take a look at what that's looking like. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. What on earth is going on with this thing? It's leaking like a sieve for some reason. There we go. feel like there's a high risk we're going to break a tap off, so I'm going to do this for you so that we don't break a tap off in Granddad's exhaust manifold. All right. Got it, Jack? Mm -hmm. You okay with that? Yep. Good. Hey, Dad, can I put it in montage mode? No. All right. We're doing this one live. Got it. And there we go, that's all fixed up. Pretty good, huh? Not bad at all. All right, we're gonna give it a uh, quick cleaning here with a degreaser so that this doesn't get all into my sandblasting media. And then you can go ahead and blast it off with the other parts. Why don't you show the other parts? There's this part, this part, this part, this part, and this part. They're all parts. And we're all going to sandblast all of them. Jack, show the sandblasting setup. So this is our sandblasting setup. 
with two big lights. Gives us plenty of light. And then we have a sand blaster. We have the vacuum cleaner. And the other part that I don't know the name of. Yep. All right, Jack, let's get you started. We'll, list this, we'll let this dry off. We'll get you started up and we'll stick the other camera in montage mode. And I'll go and start making up the next part we have to make. Oh, uh, that, that, that vacuum cleaner was turned off. I know. I don't want to plug it in while it's on. Alright, so unfortunately, somewhere along the way for this tractor, we have lost one of our rocker cover studs. Don't know where it went, don't know what happened to it, but it's gone. Now I've got the special rocker cover stud with the notch cut in it to do the oiling of the rockers. So that, that, that's fine, that one's good, we've got that one, we don't have to do anything too crazy with it. But we're missing one of the standard ones. So what I did yesterday, is I went down to the hardware store and I bought myself a 3 8 by 6 inch grade 5 stud. Should be more than enough for what we're doing here. This is just holding down the rocker and the rocker cover. And I've cut the head off the stud bolt and I've cut the base off the bolt. And what we're going to do is take you along on the making of the rest of it and how we're going to do that. And we're going to use our lathe and we're going to go through and get this set up so that we're in a good place for it. We have to pop a fine thread on the end of the fastener, which is going to be a bit of a challenge. So we're probably going to make it a little bit differently than they did. And then we need to square up and chamfer both the ends. So we're going to get cracking on that, get that made up while Jack is very busy sandblasting all the parts. All right, this will be better. There we go. Okay, that's good. Pull our tailstock back. Get our chuck out of there. We're gonna go to our live center. This is a very nice bison one. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our threading tool in there so we can get our thick out correct. Okay, good. And we need 
are example parts that I have misplaced. Stand by. All right, so what we want to do, we want to set this up. That's about the right amount of threading. We don't want it overhung any more than we have to, but we want to leave a little bit sticking out of there. So we should be good with about that. Get that tightened up and it'll call it. Good stuff. And then we're going to go ahead and set our tail stock right there. That's good. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to do this. I think we're going to have a problem. That's going to strike before I ever get to do the threading. Uh, we might have to go to a solid center for this. I don't know if this is going to save us, to be honest. Yeah, it still strikes. It still strikes in the wrong place. Well, I might just tap it by hand, to be honest. Let's just get a tapping die and just do that. Let me see if I have enough threading tool. Okay, so definitely not my preference. But what we're going to do instead, first of all, we're going to go back to our live center so I don't screw up a, a dead center. time to recharge. Oh, uh, air? The air is fine. Yeah, yeah, okay, that happens, Jack. Don't worry about that. Okay, that's going to work, I think. And what we'll just have to do is we'll have to extend it in the lathe a little bit more to make sure that we can get all the way down. So we'll do that. That'll get us where we need to be. What are you building? I am making a new one of these. We have to make a replacement, unfortunately, because the original one is missing. We have three of the four studs that are necessary for this. So let's put that there, and then let's run down, see where we're going to strike. Need about that much thread. Let's pull that back a little bit more. About that much thread. Yeah, that should give us enough clearance to get what we need there. Okay. So I think I can live with that. And really all I want to do is put a couple of passes on here. Just enough so that I can run the die down it. I have a die, so that just makes kind of everything way easier. So next thing we need to do is figure out the thread form. This, so we'll pull out the little handy dandy thread gauge that I have. I feel like that should be 24 threads per inch. That's it. And it definitely is. Yeah, that's 24 threads per inch. We'll set up our screw cutting gearbox for 24 threads per inch. Oh, uh, where are we at? So for my gearbox, that's gonna be C. And in general, for thread cutting, I will almost always put it in back here. Just so that we don't have any issues with crashes. We want to run down about that far. That should be good. Okay. We'll go ahead and get this set up. We'll 
run a scratch pass. Nice and slow. There we go. Come up till we touch. There we are. We'll push that in, I don't know, probably like 10 thou is good. set up for thread cutting and we're going to go on number one. Take a few passes until it starts getting squirrely, and then we'll finish it off with a die, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're basically done with that. I'm happy with how that's turned out. We're just going to run over to the vise, and we are going to run a die over the end of this to get it finished up. Pretty easy to do now that the threads are on there and properly formed, but you can see that it uh, came up pretty good. Looks like I went a little further than I needed to, but that's okay. I'd rather have more than less. So we'll run a tap die or a threading die down there. That'll that final size of thread and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're over here. We've got our thread lubricant on the threads. And we're gonna go ahead and use our die to do the final sizing. I just find this is easier than trying to get the, the thread size right on the point. So this should pretty easily start on here at this point with that thread mostly cut on there. looking. There's a mess. Oh yeah, that's real good. Real happy with that. We'll just get that leads up nicely and then we will run all the way down. if you don't do this, if you don't do the initial cutting on the thread with the lathe, what happens is that the uh, die will go crooked and it's incredibly hard to correct that. You end up with this wonky cut off thread if you didn't start it just perfectly square on. So these uh, tapping heads or tapping dies, they tend to work a lot better when you have equipment that's all collinear and properly centered than they do when you're trying to do stuff at home. 
personally found it's really easy to have them miss and it's just awful when they do. So we'll just keep going here. Really happy with how that's turning out. All right, so we have young master Justin here in the garage who asked if he could help. And so he's going to help. And what we're gonna do next, while Jack is doing some uh, small stuff in the background, we're gonna go ahead and get the drive pulley installed on the front for the accessory drive, okay? So Justin, the task that we have to do is we have to mount the pulley. And the first thing we have to do to achieve that goal is to find the pulley, and it's right over there, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to hold this first. Nice and clean. Looks good. That's the drive pulley, Justin. Okay. We got that for Granddad because the one that he gave us with the project was no good. And the next thing we're going to do... Bad We're going to look at the woodruff keys. I don't like how that feels loose in the shaft. Mm. That's not great. But it'll have to do. So we have three different sizes of woodruff key here. And hopefully one of them is going to fit. Okay. Only one of them. So let's just check check the lengths of the woodruff key. So I think that's probably gonna be the one. How about this one, what does this one do? That's the right size right there, I think. So we'll just tap that down. You wanna try? That's good, that's good. Let's make it flat. Just like that, okay? <clears throat> so that's that. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to grab the drive pulley. We want to grab the drive pulley. And hopefully... It fits. It slides on without too much trouble. And fits. Well, I hope it fits. Well, it definitely fits. It's a little bit stiff. So we'll try and line it up the best we can here, and then we will just drive it on with a hammer. All right, Jack, you should go finish the sandblasting. Okay. Oh, did you want to put down some Zandri dust? Yes. All right, well, we'll just pause on this for a second and get your paint changed over. Sure. Really? Oh, okay. Well, let's see if we can get this on there. Oh, and we popped the widget key right out. That sucks. Let's see if we can pop that back in there. What's going on? That should fit right in. Why did it not fit right in? I think, I'm not sure actually. Stand by. I need to get a punch, I think. real quick. There we go. So that should be better. That is better. Yeah. Let's see if we can keep that in there. 
in the same place so Wait. it doesn't move yeah, and well, get gets worse. We have worse. to be careful here. He wants to be weird about it for some strange reason. I'm not sure why. It's been one minute and eight seconds. Hold on. Okay, thank you, Jack. So that looks a little more better. Maybe that's better. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Careful, Justin. Don't be banging everything in the camera, buddy. I'm actually liking that now. That's good. I'll just keep working the Woodruff key down. Okay, that's good. We're gonna get a different hammer and a block, okay? A block of rib cages. Okay, step aside, Justin. I think that that's going to be good. Wait a second, Justin. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna check where it's lining up. Oh, that needs to go on more. That definitely needs to go on more. Justin, where did my big hammer go? So there we go. There we go. How's that line up now? Oh, it's much better. Yeah, it's going to be great. All right. Good job, Justin. All right. So another day back in the shop. We've got our rocker bolts all installed now. The valve cover has been blasted. That's all good. Happy with that. Take that away. We have got the cylinder head prepped for the rocker assembly to go in. We've got our oil feed line on this particular banjo bolt, which is correct for the rocker arm. So we should be in good place. And Jack has done a wonderful job of cleaning up the rocker assembly. So we'll go check that out, see how that's looking. Oh, well, that's definitely much freer. That's good. I think this is good enough to drop on there. Okay, let's go ahead and pick that up. And let's bring it over to the engine. We're not going to get too carried away because we got to clean up the, the push rods first. But let's just get that brought over here. Now, it only goes one way. The way that it goes is... No. Uh, actually, we need the other piece first. So just set that down in here. That's not how you're going to set it down, buddy. Yeah, just set it in. I would drop it down in there so the rockers are actually down in the engine, Jack. Look, why don't we just put it on the bench? That's a better place for it. Yeah! And just set it down the there. Bench. All right. <clears throat> now, this actually had a shield for it. It's looking pretty good. I cleaned this up as well. 
All right, well, we're gonna give it a once over and then we're going to go ahead and get that put on. All right, so we're back here on the engine today and we are gonna go ahead and get the rocker arms assembled and we're probably gonna pop the valve cover on and bolt it down and we should basically be done in here. So there's a bunch of stuff we gotta do to get that done. Uh, the first of which is to come through and get the push rods installed. So Jack, why don't you come here? Yes, sir. Grab the engine lube. Uh, okay, grab this part first. Let's go ahead and put that on. And that goes on right here. Yep, just like that. Are you sure that it goes right here? Yeah, that's a, an oil catch pan. It's bit meant to keep oil from splashing up against the valves. Okay, what next? Okay, the next thing we're gonna grab is we're gonna go ahead and grab the push rods. Grab the two brand new ones first. You can tell they look different from the others. These ones are the new ones, okay? And so what you're gonna do is we're gonna put it up this way and you're gonna put a healthy drop of engine lube on that end of it, okay? That's good. Good deal. And then we're just gonna drop that down those holes. Those are the valve holes. So go ahead and put that down in there. It should drop into the lifter, okay? It's not going in. That's about right. That's about as far as it should go. And go ahead and do the next one and do that for all of them, okay? Yep, that's correct. It's not going in. It shouldn't go necessarily go into anything, Jack. Yeah, that's it. It goes into just a little socket down in there. Oh. Make sure you put the lube on them. We don't want to put anything together dry. Want to give this motor the maximum chance of survival. If we put it in dry, what is the chance of survival? Well, it goes down because things, th yeah, that's good. It, it, you should feel resistance on it because the oil is causing uh, some suction when you try and lift off. Okay. So unfortunately, these were not marked, wired, or pigtailed in any way, shape, or form. So we have no way to know where these are supposed to go. Same thing with the lifters. They were also not marked. So we're just putting them back together as best we can. Okay. I'll tell you what, folks, when we first got this engine, it was missing quite a few bits and pieces. It was a basket case is what we call that, Jack. It came in a box. I remember when we got this, I probably was 12 years old when Dad got this motor. Would have been right around 12 when he got this motor. Yeah, would have been right around 12 years old. And we pulled it apart, and we found a bunch of problems with the tractor. And then we ended up getting... Uh, slightly newer Alice Charmers CA. Now, go put the lube in each of these sockets what? and also put the lube on each of the valve faces. Okay? The valve stem faces, sorry. All right. Going. You're doing a great job. There. Okay. That's all, folks. So go ahead and remember to put lube on all of the valves. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Lube, lube, and more lube. Let me see if I can find some uh, washers. Done. There's lube everywhere on the engine. Okay. Everywhere. Uh, Jack, that's all right. You can calm down now. Go ahead and try and put the rocker assembly on. You can take a look at the rocker assembly and you should be able to figure out which way that's supposed to go. 
This is the rocker, right? Yeah. You have to line up the holes on it. And it, it only goes on one way, Jack. See if you can figure out which way that should be. Take a look at it. See if it's obvious. Yeah, it is obvious. Good. Glad to hear it. It only goes in this way. Oh, it sure looks correct. Now you might have to tweak and adjust it a little bit because the shaft can turn inside there. Let's take a look. It's not going on. <coughs> sure it is. Okay, now we want to line up all of the little sockets with the push rods. Okay. And what you do is you basically put them in place and then you push the, the rocker down. That's See? what I've been doing. See like that? Just like that. Okay, that's perfect. I like it a lot. All right, now the next thing that we do is we take four of these nuts now and we start them on in each of these locations. Go ahead and get your socket and maybe a ratchet. Maybe a yeah, ratchet? Your, remember you got the tube socket? I asked you to get out a tube socket. Yeah. Well, go get it. Where's I don't know, where'd you put it? I guess that was on the right way. All right, wipe that down. This is the one that we made. There you go. Look, look, watch, watch. Just do like that. Oh, okay. Okay, a lot easier that way. What torque do we put these at? Um, I'm going to look in the book, but I don't think it actually is torque. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to clean up the valve cover real quick, and we're going to drop it on there so nothing can get in our nice clean engine, because the next step is a little bit more involved. What do you mean more involved? We're going to have to make an adjustment to how the engine is set up on the engine stand because we can't install the rear main seal or the stuff flywheel at this point with the way that it's set up. So we're going to make a pretty major adjustment. We're going to get ourselves all set up to go through and do that. But, but, 